Wow, it seems like a major phase has ended for Canada's most important bank, and if they don't make some changes soon, it could impact almost every single Canadian and their money. You see, this bank has a new problem, and this problem is the exact opposite of what it was before. The bank I'm talking about is the Bank of Canada. They're the big bank behind the scenes, otherwise known as the central bank, that has more power to make decisions that change the lives of every average Canadian than any politician or government agency does. And their plan will likely be impacted by new information that came out just a couple of days ago. We just got the new unemployment data for Canada, and it shows that the unemployment in Canada has increased by a total of 1%, just over 1%, just over the past calendar year. Now, that might not sound like a lot, but 1% of the population is 410,000 Canadians, because Canada's population is now 41 million people. And that brings our total unemployment rate up to 6.1%. Uh, that is 2.5 million people. And when we zoom out and look at this data over the past uh, 60 years here, uh, well, 6.1% where we are today isn't necessarily very high compared to the average over the past 60 years or so. Uh, but what I think is most important, or is at least more important, is how quickly this number changes and the trends in the direction of this line. And that's specifically for how the Bank of Canada is going to use this new information. Let me explain what I'm talking about. See, the Bank of Canada has been watching this unemployment rate like a hawk, and in a weird way, they've actually been wanting Canadian unemployment to go up. Now, you might be saying, Russell, like, why would Canada's most crucial financial institution actually want more Canadians to be unemployed? It doesn't really make sense, does it? But it all has to do with what the Bank of Canada's biggest problem, or at least their biggest fear, has been over the past two years, and how, in my opinion, that fear could be completely reversing as we speak. Now, we'll also get into how you might want to prepare yourself for this reversal later in the video. Time for a new chart. This is showing Canada's inflation rate over the past 10 years. Uh, and if you live in Canada, you'll not be surprised to hear that inflation uh, had an, an absolutely insanely high period, at least relative to the past 20, 30 years. Um, recently, uh, over the past couple of years, um, we saw this inflation spike up, um, largely as a result of the vast amounts of money that the Bank of Canada added into the economy during their COVID stimulus period to try to prop up the economy. So as a response to this inflation, the Bank of Canada then decided to push interest rates up to make people spend less money, which results in less demand and in theory less inflation, and it has caused inflation to head back down. So they raised rates and raised rates again, and even though they raised rates so rapidly, they were still afraid of inflation coming back, largely because of something that they learned from the past. Listen to this clip from just about a year ago. We are trying to balance the risks of under and over tightening monetary policy. If we don't do enough now, we'll likely have to do even more later. But if we do too much, we risk making economic conditions unnecessarily painful for everybody. We've come a long way and we don't want to squander the progress we've made. We need to stay the course to restore price stability for Canadians. So he mentions a couple things there, this concept of over-tightening or under-tightening. Uh, tightening is just referred to uh, essentially how interest rates go. If they go up or down, um, if you're raising interest rates, you're essentially tightening the economy. Uh, and if you're uh, lowering interest rates, you're essentially loosening it. So they're afraid of under or over-tightening. Uh, the main reason that they're most afraid of under-tightening, though, is because of what they learned in the past. Um, when we take a look at the 70s here, this is that same inflation chart and it uh, is showing us the past hundred years now, um, we can see this sort of double dip action that happened right here uh, in the 70s. This is when inflation went extremely high, above 12%, and then the Bank of Canada raised interest rates much like they're doing now and have been doing over the past number of years, the past couple of years. Um, they raised rates and inflation looked like it was coming down, uh, but then inflation came back and they had to raise rates even further in order to get it to come down and remain down over a sustained period. This resulted in even more economic pain for average Canadians because, well, they had to deal with higher interest rates for longer, um, which can be painful for people who are in debt or even businesses that need to take on debt to expand. So uh, today's Bank of Canada and the Bank of Canada over the past few years has been looking at this and saying, hey, we don't want that to happen again. We don't want to 
under tighten. And we don't want to cut interest rates too soon, uh, lest we experience this uh, second round of inflation that happened in the 70s. All of this is what's led the Bank of Canada to be super afraid of under tightening or raising rates too little or not keeping them high for long enough, um, and less afraid of over tightening or raising rates too much. But now, I think that this concern of under tightening could be flipping itself on its head, and I'll explain why, but first I want to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video, Crypto.com. I'll start off by saying crypto can be risky, it's not for everyone, and you can definitely lose what you put in. But more and more Canadians are including crypto as part of their investment portfolio, myself included. I first started getting into crypto for reasons that are largely related to what we've been talking about in this video, actually. Uh, it doesn't feel entirely right to me that a small group of elite individuals have so much centralized control over our financial system, and I'm personally interested in how crypto could be part of the solution to this problem. And if you're looking to buy crypto, Crypto.com is a solid place to do so. You can fund your account and choose from a selection of over 250 different cryptocurrencies, all with Canadian dollars. But personally, and obviously this isn't financial advice, I tend to stick to the more tried and true Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now additionally, if you choose to keep your crypto on the Crypto.com platform after you buy it, you can earn some interest via their Earn product. Now over the long term though, I do think that it's beneficial to learn about self-custody and to transfer your crypto to a cold wallet that's secured by a hardware wallet device that you personally control. So if you're looking to buy some crypto, make sure to check out Crypto.com and use the referral code RUSS, R-U-S-S, or you can just click the link in the description of this video. And again, thank you to Crypto.com for making making videos like these possible. So the Bank of Canada has been completely honed in on not lowering interest rates too early to avoid this inflation repeat that they saw in the 70s. But, but this new unemployment increase that we just went over at the top of the video has some people saying that the Bank of Canada might have actually overdone it and that they may have left rates at this higher level for too long. And personally, I don't blame people for having this concern at the very least, especially given the Bank of Canada's recent track record. Take a look at this article and uh, make special note of the date that it was posted. This is from the end of July 2021. Now, the reason the date is important is because at this point in time, inflation had already started increasing past the bank's comfortable range. It was already above 3%, but inflation hadn't yet skyrocketed at this point. Now, despite the early warning signs, the Bank of Canada didn't do anything when they saw the, the start of inflation, even saying, hey, don't overreact to this temporary or transitory is the word that they always used. Uh, it's here today, gone tomorrow, this temporary inflation. Um, and that's what the Bank of Canada's governor, Tiff Macklem, the same guy who we heard the clip of before, was saying in July of 2021. He even went on to say the Bank of Canada remains firmly committed to keeping inflation low, stable, and predictable, again said in July of 2021. You can be confident that we will keep the cost of living under control as the economy reopens after COVID. Uh, and if we scroll down here even more, all these factors have driven prices up, but none of them are likely to last, so we shouldn't overreact to these temporary price increases. So this was the Bank of Canada's position at the time, but at the very same time, some economists were concerned, pointing out how they thought that these were actually early warning signs that we could see inflation, as we eventually ended up seeing, um, something many people actually expected would happen after the massive money printing operation called quantitative easing that the Bank of Canada operated to prop up the Canadian economy when we had to shut down as a result of COVID. So humor me here. Is it possible that just as they were too slow to react when inflation was on the way up, that they might be reacting too slowly this time as they're seeing these early signs of a potential economic slowdown? Now, some people are saying that the Bank of Canada should already be cutting rates. They should have already started as business insolvencies and unemployment have been increasing over the past year. We're really going to have to wait and see what the Bank of Canada will do. They just got this data, but this Wednesday, um, just a few days from now, the Bank of Canada is going to be announcing whether or not they'll be cutting rates or if they'll be keeping them the same for a little while longer. But there is one thing that seems quite likely to me, and it's that this unemployment number will keep increasing. 
You see, more and more Canadians are recognizing that when you combine high interest rates with record-setting population growth, well, it turns out that a higher number of people end up unemployed, as new Canadians fill existing low-wage jobs, simultaneously keeping those same wages low. This is something that just a few years ago, maybe even less time ago, uh, would have had many people calling you racist to even question immigration policy and its economic impact on average Canadians. But now, uh, it's something that even the Liberal Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, agrees with. Take a listen to this clip because it seems that there's been an about face here. Over the past few years, we've seen a massive spike in temporary immigration whether it's temporary foreign workers uh, or uh, whether it's international students in particular that have uh, grown at a rate far beyond uh, what uh, Canada has uh, been able to absorb. Now we're at seven and a half percent of our population comprised of temporary immigrants. That's something uh, that we need to get back under control, but also uh, increasingly more and more businesses uh, relying on temporary foreign workers in a way that's driving down wages in some sectors. So we want to get those numbers down. Definitely interesting stuff to hear that kind of language um, from the Prime Minister, but all this to say in, in its entirety, we don't know exactly how the Bank of Canada is going to react to this new data, but it does seem likely that at some point in the future, central banks like the Bank of Canada will probably lower their interest rates. So what can you personally do to put yourself in a good position for when this happens? Well, honestly, I think that it probably comes down to trying to play the same game that many of Canada's wealthy elites do, and to play the game by their rules, despite any potential uh, distaste that we may have for them. And the main thing that they all do comes down to two words, and that's owning assets. It seems I share my thoughts on this more and more regularly in these videos, and it tends to sound a little bit vanilla to, to a lot of people, I think. I mean, it's definitely not a silver bullet or something that will magically uh, solve things, or, and it's also not specific tailored financial advice for you. Uh, but I'm personally doing everything that I can to reduce my living expenses increase my income, and investing the difference. And I think that you should probably consider doing the same yourself. Um, I often tell people to look into investing in a low-fee diversified index ETF uh, and do that inside of a TFSA account, if you haven't already. That's usually a good place to start. And for some people who are more comfortable with a little bit of risk, holding some other hard assets, be it gold or, or Bitcoin or Ethereum, is also an option. And I also know that it's easy to say that kind of stuff, but hard to do, especially when so many people are having a hard time making ends meet these days. But I do think that it's the only way to protect yourself and to protect your family. Nobody else is going to save you from the impacts of the, uh, the manipulation of our financial system and the inflating away of the value of the dollars that we both earn and, and try to save. Now, unfortunately, it seems to me that the gap between the people who are more well-off in Canada Canada and those who aren't is only widening and I don't see it coming back together as, as sad as that is to say. So the way that I'm looking at it is that I'm trying my best to own things that aren't as easily devalued so that I can set myself and my family up for the future and I think that's all we can do. But I'm curious what you think about everything we've covered in today's video. Do you think that this new uh, jobs data, the unemployment data, is going to change the Bank of Canada's mind? Do you think that they're going to lower rates or keep them the same? Have they already missed the mark? Have they already um, waited too long to lower interest rates? Do you think that this is going to have a potential negative impact on the economy? I don't think that anyone has a crystal ball to tell you for sure, but I'm curious what you think. What have I missed? What have I gotten right? Let me know down in the comments. I'm trying to learn from, uh, from everyone who watches these videos as well. Um, sort of some blind spots that I might have. So feel free to share down there. And if you haven't already done so, check out the links in the description. Thank you again to the sponsor of today's video, crypto.com. Uh, and make sure to sign up for the email newsletter that I send out after every one of these videos with all the sources that I've used and additional bonus content. So I'll check you on there. But with all that said, thanks so much for watching, everybody. I really hope this video helped you out at least a little bit, and I'll see you next time.